Welcome, Welcome to the Living the Fit Life Podcast, episode 61. I'm your host, Chad Mueller. And what an episode we have today. First off, excited to welcome Coach ADJ. Hot off a summer of endurance, and I know he's got a big race coming up, but what's up, buddy? How's it going, dude? Not much, not much. Been a good summer. Been busy. Haven't had time to sit down with you and chat at all, but uh, yeah, things are good. Things are good. Finally, uh, going to finish off this endurance season uh end of october so excited for that yeah we had uh yeah, we did endurance podcast, podcast with jess on the R- with her ironman win recently and i'm sure we'll do another episode with I'm you sure after we'll your what's you what's the race you're doing and when, when is it two weeks from now right yeah i should get a season recap episode just to talk about all the craziness <laughs> okay. um i don't have quite we'll set, the, that set that up i don't have quite the accolades that Jess has, so it's not as exciting. But uh, the race that we're going to is in St. George, Utah, which is like southern Utah, close to Arizona, uh, in the in the desert. We fly into Vegas and then go out from there. So super cool race, super cool venue. Uh, it's technically the Ironman, ha- half Ironman World Championships. So they take all the top athletes all from... Right all of the races in the past year and then they put them all on one course so they can all try to hunt each other down for five five hours so it should be super cool first time going to like a world championship event for that so it's like i would say when you go from the open maybe to like the quarters or the semis all of a sudden like your you know your competition is everyone is at it at a crazy high level so it's pretty cool yeah yeah, cool. Super cool. No, it's awesome. Yeah, and uh, I mean, our community, yeah, we have sort of half endurance, half, half, half endurance, half CrossFit, so we kind of flip flop between conversations, but we'll talk endurance in an upcoming episode. We're going to talk CrossFit today. Um, and super lucky to have uh, the sports, one of the sports brightest stars, Jack Farlow, on the call. How's it going, Jack? On the call. How's it going, Jack? Good. How are you guys? Good. How are you guys? Great, man. Good, Great. It's been a big year for you, eh? year for you, eh? Has been pretty big, yeah. Uh, has been getting bigger big, too yeah. by the looks uh, of it. So that's good. Yeah, man. For obviously, you went to yeah, for, the Atlas Games. You finished ninth the there games, you finished with ninth some success there, and maybe some heart some heartbreak. But we'll get into that a bit more heartbreak. later. You, you, went later. you went to the Can West comp, which you finished fourth. You went to the Can East comp recently, which you finished first. In the middle of all that, you were training with the champ T. Claire Toomey. And then you're on your way to the Rogue Invitational in a few weeks. So it sounds like a pretty good resume for 2022. Yeah, good path for sure. Yeah, good path for sure. I mean, Rogue will be sweet. And that was totally kind of out of the blue. Didn't really train for it. Just happened. So, yeah. Wow. So, so like, I have, I have to ask, like, one of my first questions, because, like, what is what does your season look like? Because I know, obviously, is, the goal is to, like? the end goal is to make it to the CrossFit the Games, and there's a the season structure in that place. But in cases where you don't make it to the CrossFit games, games, like, did you get an off-season this year? Did, did you, you kind of just fill it up with all these sort of different comps and then sort of surprise to get an invitation to the Rogue Invitational? Like, how'd you break out your season? Yeah, I view, uh, I kind of view the end of last season as my Can West, so... I mean, ideally, I would have been at the games last year. Uh, that didn't happen. So then kind of Can West turned into the season finale and then hit the reset button for a little bit. And now I'm kind of into the 2022-23 season. And I guess uh, the goal with that was to get some competition experience in. Um, so I did the road qualifier just not really thinking that that was actually going to happen. But then I felt the workouts were going pretty well. And uh, sure enough, it happened. So uh yeah so that's kind of the start of 2022 23 in my eyes for me that's wicked dude that's wicked and how'd you get the like where'd the rogue invitational come from um i've never been very good at qualifier things um at least not the open and last year Wadapalooza qualifier. So I figured it wouldn't hurt to to get that in just as a, a qualifier experience. And even when those workouts came out, I hated them so much. That I was like, man, I don't even want to do this. Like I have zero hope of even making myself look good in the qualifier. Um, 
but yeah it was but yeah it was, it, was, uh, it was a weird experience i just did the first one and i like went well paced it well and then i started feeling good about them kind of just kept building on itself um and then yeah i think by the time i finished the fifth one i was like i think i have a chance uh submitted my scores but they didn't look good enough so that night at like 8 p.m i went back and uh redid a workout and uh, ended up that was my best one that I already did. So I shaved like a minute and a half off. Nice. And that was shaved more than enough. Half yeah. Half and that was more than enough. Yeah. Clutch. Wow. wow that's awesome. What, what was that? What workout was that? That was the uh that was that the was row uh, handstand strict handstand push ups. Hand it was like thirty cals and then like nine, twelve, fifteen, up to twenty one of strict handstand push ups. So the first time I did it, I uh the first time I did it I was just pacing the row enough that I felt like I could really attack the wall. And then the second the time, I kind of just took uh, out that pacing time, element. I kind of just and then, that so element. ended up rowing like 150, 200 cows an hour faster. And for some reason, my hand were just way better too. So, way better too. Cool. The kids showed up. The kids showed up. Mm-hmm. That's wicked, man. Congrats, man. Congrats. It's going to be super exciting to see you there. That, a workout that probably wouldn't have been like super strong for you in the past, but now you're kind of attacking these like yeah pacing yeah. conditioning gymnastics workouts sweet yeah handstand push-ups have like yeah. weirdly turned, turned from my worst movement to a top three in like a year so like a year so yeah here we are um, yeah here we are it That's makes cool, sense dude. like you're well, super yeah, strong overhead it was just yeah. translating it sorry i'm talking over you but that's cool that makes sense yeah all good. All good. We'll find our way, AJ. No, I just I was gonna say. No, um, I was gonna say. Uh, no, we'll definitely jump into the some of the comments, but I did want to. But I did want to kind of get more of a sort of a foundational story. So, how old are you now? How old are you now? Uh, twenty currently. Uh, twenty currently. And when did you start? Cr- when did you cross start cr- CrossFit? Um. I don't know. It's a bit um, blurry. I, I think I maybe walked blurry. into a CrossFit gym the first, across the gym. first time when I was um, twelve. Maybe even eleven. Um, but maybe that was kind of just the teens class, like during the class, summer for like three classes a week, maybe. Um, and I liked maybe. it, but um, and I liked no it, passion for it. And then I, I'd say I really started in I, 2014 I started in or maybe 15. Or and that was the first year of the teenage, teenage games. And that, was the um, teenage and that was in Carson. Um, I just remember watching that. Uh, watching and it was kind that, of perfect timing. My uh, sister and, and brother-in-law just moved back from and Seattle. And they're like, at the time, they were pretty like, hardcore CrossFitters. At the time, they were pretty uh, hardcore CrossFitters. Gym in their garage and all that good stuff. So I was just spending the week with them, having the gym in the garage while watching the teenage games was like the perfect concoction to get a young guy going. So uh, ever since then, uh, just kind of going with the goal in mind of like wanting to do what I saw them do that weekend. And then obviously that progressed to no longer being in the teenage division. No longer being in the teenage division. Yeah. That's a pretty cool story. What what got you into CrossFit in 2012? Like what brought you to a CrossFit gym? Uh, same thing. My sister and brother in law, uh, yeah, they were super into it. Okay. Yeah, they okay. they owned a gym in Seattle and they, they kind of just spread the word. So we thought we'd go word, try it out. Okay, sweet. Okay. okay. Family connections. Family okay. Connections, okay. That's an easy one. <laughs> so at that time, so like, that when time, you're watching, like when you're watching, like, or I like, guess or when you're growing up, like, were you involved in other sports leading up to that or during that part period? Yeah, uh, yeah. Hockey uh, was my main, one, was but, main one, but uh, like I, I uh, played a little I bit of everything: baseball, 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 lacrosse. lacrosse. Uh, like at school, uh, like I, school, you I, name it, I was on the sports was team. The so team. definitely, so uh, definitely uh, an athletic uh, background. An athletic and then, background, and then kind of when I started CrossFit, started CrossFit, everyone kind of assumed, kind of assumed uh, uh, that you're doing it to get better at your sport, which makes sense. And I kind of just nodded along because I didn't really feel comfortable telling people like, "Oh no, I want to go to the CrossFit games when I'm like." a little chubby 14 year old kid uh but eventually kid. that passion uh, kind of grew for hockey kind of i remember hockey, uh one remember. time being in the playoffs uh, we we're the first playoffs, team playing, playing like the eighth team playing so like the eight should be an easy win uh but it was it was looking uh, grim there for a second and i just was on the bench watching on the bench watching like well uh the opens like a month away so uh just more training time if we lose but we didn't so it was all good but that's when i kind of knew it was time to shift focus a little when did, when did you, you um, um so when did you, um, 
So I guess, when did you when start did you going start sort going of full-time, time, taking CrossFit, CrossFit pretty serious, like making it a significant, significant, significant goal and you're kind of ditching, ditching other sports, sports and you're kind of going full in? Uh, I'd say there were two kind uh, of different jumps. So the first one was probably so in grade 11, 11 to 12. That's when I stopped playing like rep hockey and I moved to just once a week, like house league with some friends. So that was a mixture of like, that was priority of like shifting to school and then also now I have way more free time and way more free so I was able to train so a bit more um a bit and more. I kind of kept um, that I kind of kept that up. it was like maybe two sections maybe a day two but today, uh whatever uh, you want to go to a cottage to for the weekend like who weekend, cares I'll ditch like, training I'll ditch training um and then that um, kind of, and then that so kind of, good enough training so volume, but not so much volume, of the dedication, so much I'd say. Dedication, I'd say. Uh, and then that kind of uh, shifted when I started working with Josh, that was two Josh, years, ago. years ago. And now it's kind of like now it's training like is the priority. I'll, obviously, I'm still obviously in school, in school, school so I got to keep so that keep up, that to, a up degree. to a degree. But like I'm willing to forego other opportunities just to get like your training in for the day. So kind of two big jumps there. No, that's cool. That's cool. And, and were you like always, always uh, uh, like, did you feel you were always a, a strong athlete? Um, um, I remember being, I remember being young, like super young. young super and I young, felt like, and I felt like I was dominant, I was like dominant, on hot in hockey. Like, like I was, hockey, felt like, like, I was like I was the best player on the ice. ice. Uh, like you name uh, it, like arm wrestling at school, like guaranteed win. And slowly, and slowly that started that to started shift to like, to like now like, I can't keep up as well. Uh, there were some people uh, that could hit, people beat me in an arm wrestle. Arm wrestle and I got like, I got, like, was never fat, never but like that definitely like, got a bit chubby. Got a bit chubby. Um, um, and then that kind of shifted kind of back shifted when I started back, working I out. So, so I had it in me, I had but in I, me, I think I lost I, it for a little bit. <laughs> we'll give this guy his monster leg strength credit to uh, his hockey playing days. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's for sure. Explosive. I think so. Yeah, like, I mean, you... Obviously, Obviously, at the Atlas Games, you put up a, a massive uh, at the, the the lifting complex. You regularly, you regularly post, post sort of big lifts, lifts and, and like toss around barbells, barbells and you and you, you got, got uh, explosive, explosive speed, speed. And obviously, obviously you're a super, super strong, strong guy. guy. So like, so yeah, I guess yeah, I guess it comes, it comes from, from like, like you, know, you know hockey, hockey and, and doing different things. Maybe doing CrossFit early. early. I guess it comes down to like also timing and age, right? Like, I mean, I know. ADJ, we talk about that a lot of times, just, just having, having strength, strength at a young age is so much more important than most other things, right? You can't really, adding strength in the teenage years is so much easier than adding strength in your 20s and 30s. Yeah, exactly. If you Once you develop that explosive strength at a young age and then combine it with Jack's athleticism, then uh, it's easier to maintain where when you're trying to develop it, um, takes so many years to do so this this yeah. young guy's got it i didn't realize jack's only 20 years old <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. so like, like when you're, when you're in, the in the early times, times when you're jumping the crossfit, crossfit like did you find it, find it um, um like how how, how was those how first few years, years was, was it for you like, like you know just, you know, just did you pick it up pretty, pretty quickly? quickly did you feel like you were kind of advancing pretty quick or was it kind of a struggle for you um, um, I think I was okay. I was okay. Uh, like nothing uh, special. Nothing special. Um, um, in the times in the that I was saying I did it and like did it, didn't really have any purpose have behind it, just kind of going a couple times a week. Um, um, like I, I like, could, I had I kipping could, pull-ups kipping and that was a big deal in like the teens class, teens but, class, but, uh, by uh, no means was I like really like excelling with it. I don't think, um, um, yeah, and I, I'd say that yeah, was kind of the time where I was, kind of my athleticism was, hin my athleticism hindered a little bit. So, little uh, bit. so uh, yeah, I don't think I was anything special, yeah, I but definitely I when I picked it up the second time and kind of started getting into it a bit more, then very quickly I saw, like, results, uh, especially playing hockey. I mean, like I said, I wasn't really doing it for that, but, yeah, just, like, you kind of felt like then you dictated the pace of the game and you weren't following along as much. So. I'm, I'm sure you might yeah, you get might this, this question, question a lot in your future, but like, do you have any advice for some young teens that are kind of like, it, it's pretty it's common, common, especially like, like in today's age of for most, you know, let's call it 13 to 18 to be playing multiple sports or playing one sport like a lot. And obviously there's some sort of training that goes in, into that. Like, would you have any advice for any sort of teens going through that, like that might want to explore CrossFit or maybe they should be exploring CrossFit? 
Yeah, I think finding, yeah, I think finding like a really good like a really coach good or a place coach, to go, place is, to go is, is, is the number one thing. Number one thing. I like worked out I, in my like, garage by myself for two, three years, two, three years and, and kind of just learned things through learn watching things videos through watching and like a bit of coaching here and there. But having someone to actually watch you right from the get go is super big. And then I have this theory that the reason I'm I'm strong is because I just eight as a kid eight like those kid, those like fat those years like fat helped, years, me like helped me out uh, so i think uh, it's really so important really like you important, definitely like, don't want to be under eating uh, uh like if anything like if anything, if anything, pack, if anything a couple pack a couple on, on but like just, but, like, just always, always be always be full i think that's pretty big yeah. Yeah. cool love that coach adj and i could talk about that for a long time yes absolutely love that yeah it's funny like some kids at a young age their metabolism isn't firing yet but so they're, they're, they're always full or they're not hungry or they're whatever. But then, yeah, you get to those years where you just need to, uh, once you hit puberty, you just need to like pack it in. Right. Which is amazing. Cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that. I imagine you're burning so much energy too. Yeah. Crazy. So like during like, those during years, those like, years, like, did you have any sort, sort of, uh, uh, idols or idols mentors? mentors? Like, who are you, who watching, are you watching when you're watching, you the, watching games? the games? Who was your... Um, um, Rich was Rich like was like the original guy. The original guy. Uh, uh, I, I, guess I, I, I guess I really started following. Following. Uh, like I would have watched. Uh, like I would have watched in like 2012, 2012 to 13, 13 but he was kind of the end of his time, time when I really started really getting really into it. So he was that guy then. Guy then. Uh, and he was uh, kind of the guy that I would always like try to be like. Whether that's like bending my arms early on the snatch to be like him, or leaving my shoes untied because I saw that that's what he was doing in training. Uh, some good habits and uh, bad, but he was the original guy. guy. Um, um, and then, you know, as people come in, I kind of start, start to like this guy or that guy, guy, but Rich was definitely the first, and that was probably a pretty solid role model to have. So now, so now are you feeling a little bit of the celebrity factor now that you're kind of, you know, on the verge of, you know, being a games athlete? You're obviously a rising star within the sport. Are you feeling any of that? Uh, no, I don't think, uh, no, I think I'm still okay. just kind of trying, still trying, to, break uh, kind of trying to break in. Maybe in. soon. There have been a couple moments maybe where soon. I like, been a oh, couple that's kind of cool. Like, like whatever someone wants a picture of this, that's, that's having a couple times. So that's, having a that's always time, nice, so. but, um, that's always nice, it still but, has that, um, like kind of shock that, factor for me whenever that happens. So I think until that stops, I still feel like I'm not quite there. I still feel like I'm not quite there. Cool. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have the pass, pass and pass jump in. Like, how was training with Tia? Yeah. Uh, that was. I mean, it was uh, that pretty was, cool. Uh, I mean, she kind of wasn't in full swing. She kind of wasn't in off-season mode, so like, uh, it wasn't like, wow, well, look how good uh, she is. It wasn't like, wow, well, uh, just because like she was the whole group was there too, right? Like Saxon and Brooke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like nothing. Yeah, just there. Obviously, she's very good. Um. But yeah, we did most of our training um, oh yeah, uh, with Saxon because he's going uh, to Rogue as well. So, he's going to Rogue as well. Um, so he was kind of um, ramping up for that. Kind of ramping up for um, that. I, you know, um, I you know, we try not to be too competitive to with, be it. Too um, with it. Um, but especially but for me, like I, I don't have that much exposure to other uh, kind of big name uh, athletes on the men's side. Like obviously, I train with them often, but that's kind of harder to compare yourself. So I was kind of suddenly just. I was kind like of sizing, sizing myself up to him like uh, the whole weekend, him. like kind of seeing uh, like, oh, what kind of pace like is, is he holding? How fast is he going on this? Um, so yeah, that was pretty eye opening. Um, so yeah, that was pretty eye opening. There were definitely um, things that I felt like there oh, were man, definitely like, things that I felt like I might oh, actually man, be like, good. I, and then there were some things where it's like, oh, this is why he's as good as he is. Like I, I don't have that in me right now to do that. So some positive and also like some positive and also like reinforcing of like yeah we still got work to do of like yeah we still got work to do it's pretty cool man it's pretty cool it's it's cool it's i mean cool. similar to like any other sport right like there's different levels within the sport right and you get exposed to them at different milestones in the journey so it's super cool that you kind of you've unlocked the door right you're now on the verge of, you haven't made the games yet but you're on the verge of it so obviously you're at a certain tier right now and there's obviously a lot of room for you to, there's, there's a pretty big pretty ceiling big for you. So, so it's cool to cool see to the, see the journey you've been on so far for sure. Yeah. So what, so, what, so, so tell us, tell us, 
what have you what, what, you, is, what is sort of training been training like right now as you lead up to rogue which is probably one of the you know one of the bigger competitions you've done so far obviously from a competition level and from a volume i imagine you know the atlas games and semifinals would probably be similar but how are you how are sort you of sort training of right now leading up to rogue yeah i don't really feel yeah i don't so really much feel like i've been training so for like rogue training up to now rogue. like maybe up on now? saturdays maybe or sundays we'll kind of do some Sunday more kind of do some more specific rogue prep specific but rogue prep, during but the week like, during the week like it's the same progressions same i've been doing for like over a month now kind of just building on running and biking and some swimming stuff too and then like a couple strength things here and there here and there so it's kind of kind of feels like basic training and then like i said on the weekend sometimes We'll get, we'll get a bit more rogue, rogue bias rogue kind of bias training kind in. Of training in. Um, um, but yeah, that's that's yeah, good that's, in a way. I haven't thought too too much about it yet. Still got a couple weeks, but definitely but just building up kind of like my base, what I need to be working on. And I'm sure that's only going to help me at Rogue. So that's only going to help me at Rogue. So yeah. That's cool. So like, how is training? How's training, training and fitness, and fitness different? different? Like, so as so you were as leading, up leading up to, to let's say, say the Atlas, Atlas games, games until now, like, now, do you feel like you have dialed in certain, certain weaknesses? weaknesses? Like, you've been like focusing on them for, for so much. And what what are those? Um, for sure, I think um, training. For sure, I think last year uh was last year almost just getting uh, a lot better at the things that i was already like pretty good at but that you know i was already really really good at at, um really good at and then i just kind of didn't have that engine to back it up i felt like uh so the goal so far this year has been the goal so to build that engine to back it up so not so much work on like the finer details um but more just that kind of taking a step back and and building up the engine so that's what we've been doing so a little a little bit of strength doing, work here uh, and there too, just to kind of keep there, what I have. Um, maybe even I lose have, a little bit, that's fine. But um, bit, yeah, that's, that's fine, kind of the difference between um, now yeah, and pre atlas. So pre atlas would have been like a lot of pre atlas would have been like a lot of parallel handstand push ups, high skill gymnastics, parallel handstand push ups. Um, and yeah, like I had all that, but now I can. Yeah, like I had all that, but capacity to do everything is just improving. No, it's cool. Yeah, and you're kind of you're saying, kind of like, saying like handstand push-ups, push-ups that were a weakness in other, obviously one of your better movements. So it's so it's really cool it's to see that you're actually, actually getting like, like within, within, let's say, a year, or, you know, eight months, eight months you're actually progressing, progressing signi- significantly. significantly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask you, you since, since Can West, Can, West, Can, East, Can like, East, like, there's not, not much coverage of it. How do those events go for you? Like, did you? learn a lot from those those smaller smaller events that you're going to start bringing into sort of the competition floor? Um, I'd say so. I feel like going Um, back to Atlas. I feel like um, going back to Atlas. Um, I, I, I didn't really feel like myself there. I, I, I don't I know really what, like myself why there. not? Like, I, I don't think it changed the result, like but just like during the workout, the kind of head spaces I was in wasn't like attack mode other than, than like the couple that I knew I was going to crush. The ones that I felt like I was not going to do well at, I kind of stepped out the whole time. So I just didn't feel like myself there. I can feel like myself there. I can West rather. Really, really not that much better really not that much performance better, really like fourth in that really field like versus eighth or ninth versus eighth however you want to look at it at atlas really is not much better but i can't really say much better but i felt like, like myself like way, like way better headspace um but that was at a time where like um, i know i took a couple weeks off after atlas you do maybe a couple weeks of training and then you're competing at can west training and then you're so really not that much on the line really not in terms of like proving that your training's paying off that so can is a bit off. different because now I've been training for like two months now I've been since the start of the like season. Two months. Uh, built, like, built like working on all the things that I should be working on. And then when they released those workouts, I I felt like a lot of them were things that like felt like two months ago even I would have been like ah man that's not good. But now I was like yeah I'm good I've done this. But now I was like yeah. Um. So Kenny's just kind of just proving proving that it wasn't like a stacked field per se. But wasn't like I mean everyone's gonna have their workouts that they can give you a run on. So uh it was good just to kind of compare there, see where I've gotten better, and I was pretty happy where I've gotten. Better a lot of the performances, some of my of some of my event wins were things that some of my event I'm not very good at. Uh, I wasn't very good at, so I was that was good to see. So I that was good to see. Wicked. Yeah, I'm so, loving. Obviously, I'm just for quick. Go ahead. I'm yeah, loving seeing the, the the progress. Um, 
especially since, uh, I mean, just over the past two years, I think uh, watching you come in as, as a powerhouse. And then I think what a lot of people don't see is like, Jack's not just a monster lifter, but I, I see this guy at the track all the time. And I've seen him run a 20 minute 5k, um, you know, which it's hard, you know, to do either of those, let alone merge them into one. So to see all that hard work paying off is so cool because I feel like you, you know, especially now have built the engine, you have the strength and power, you've put those high skills to the test and uh, yeah, you're reaping the benefits at a good mm -hmm. time, which is super cool. Yeah, I feel like yeah, strength feel is like the thing that, like, I'll, that always like I'll always have, always in, my back have in my back pocket. And engines, the and thing that's like, the thing that like I can seasonally like can kind of build up to it. Obviously, it, build up to it. Obviously, it helps it, long term, it even when I'm doing now. But definitely, like now, I can, I can get it up when I need when it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely more consistent with it now, right? Where it was just kind of like an off season thing in the past but now you're like right you know, exactly continuing yeah like to I did right, running, exactly yeah. leading up that I list the running leading up that list right cool amazing love it 20 minute 5k sub 20 minute 5k it's pretty solid yeah isn't that isn't that incre like it's, it's crazy and now you're running like at the track running 2k intervals under four minutes a kilometer and like yeah it's wicked mm -hmm. wicked well you guys are you guys are either like in the pool on the bike at the track or doing like 40 minute emoms on the you know rower c2 bike skier every day every day so your engines yeah. are just growing like crazy yeah. which is amazing yeah that's yeah, gotta be one of the things that the separates, thing separates like sort of the elite like crossfitters from the crossfitters, from the crossfitters right like spending, spending doing like a 40 like minute emom on, on a bike or like two like different two machines it's like average, average you ain't doing, doing that, that. <laughs> sorry mm. sorry yeah <laughs> yeah these these guys train more just on the engine work than most people train in a week <laughs> right plus then they do all their yeah. strength training you know gymnastics metcons yeah so cool yeah, so Jack, you so do Jack, two you do sessions two a day sessions usually? Day usually? Uh, yeah, time. almost always. Uh, um, yeah, almost always. Morning um, is yeah, like that bike morning. swim or run. Yeah, like that maybe bike something swim else or run. if it's if I'm already maybe at the gym. Else, if it's um, at the gym. and then yeah, the afternoon um, usually yeah, has yeah, like a longer piece, some like lifting, piece, some days, things like that, and then I'll get still like a couple plastic CrossFit metcons in a week as well. Cool, cool. And so, like, so like what's, your, what's your what's your sort of recovery plan? Recovery plan? Like, how do you, how do focus, you focus on recovery? recovery? Like, what do you do? What active do you do recovery active days? Recovery do you just do different treatments? treatments. How do you mix that all in? Um, Thursday, or sorry, Thursday, Fridays, Thursday, is, Fridays is, uh, is uh, I guess active recovery. So a swim, and then uh, like today at the gym, I did like a thirty minute EMOM with just kind of like feel good move movements. So like movements, row some body weight step ups, things like that. Um, and then Tuesday is completely off for me, so nothing going on there outside of kind of training time off. Training time off. Uh, I've put like a big I've emphasis like on big sleep emphasis this year, so this year, I'm, so I'm trying, to trying to be in bed for nine hours, but that means I'm asleep for sleep all nine, for likely, not, nine but, likely not, but uh, like lights out uh, and lights out closing my eyes for nine hours. I see a physio if something is like bugging me a little bit. I'm not like the biggest massage fan really, but then it's just maybe like 20, 30 minutes of stretching before bed every night. Stretching before bed every night. Cool. And have you, have you noticed like a big difference with the sleep? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, for you're just sure. so much uh, more alert and have so, so, so much more energy. More alert. Um, and so much more I also got this. Um, uh, I also got this uh, alarm uh, clock that I heard Fraser talking, talking about that wakes you up with light. And uh, it's pretty yeah, sweet yeah. too. Like you uh, wake up just feeling, feeling like you you're ready to go. Feeling, uh, ready to so go. a mix of two, I assume. But so yeah, mix of two, I'm feeling I good. assume. But yeah, doing good. Nice, nice. That's cool. That's cool. And then, yeah, like, yeah, like obviously, obviously um, um, you were kind of talking about nutrition, nutrition a little bit when you were younger. How has, How has nutrition, nutrition changed, changed for you as you got more, got serious? more serious? Like, like you're a pretty, you're big, pretty guy. big guy. You obviously, obviously work out multiple times a day. Like, day. like I'm assuming you're eating a ton of food. food. 
Yeah. What does it look um, like? It what does a day like, in the yeah, life of like, um, you know eating for you look like? Yeah, back in the day. Uh, yeah, like, back in the day, never struggled uh, like, to eat enough, never which is to eat enough. crazy considering the amount like I do have to eat. A lot of people <laughs> would probably <laughs> think it's a lot of people. Would um, it's uh, unenjoyable, but yeah, like uh, I love to eat. Unenjoyable, so. but yeah, like I love to um, eat. So. I'd say um, I really started dialing in really probably two dialing years dialing ago years now. Ago uh, that's ago just now. like uh, that's finding like a nutrition coach, nutrition coach kind of macro coach tracking. Kind of macro tracking. Um, mm-hmm. And probably um, in the past two years, I've the past only not years, tracked for like not tracked four weeks for like total. So weeks pretty total, uh, consistent so. with that. Pretty, uh, consistent um, depending with that. on the time of year, um, depending uh, on the time of year, changes how much I'm eating. Um, right now with so much um, right now like longer so endurance much, work it's uh, definitely like higher a little bit so I'm up near 5100 so cows, right cows right now um, but yeah that goes um, with, like with all the uh, <laughs> like uh, sugary things and sugary easy things. to digest yeah, yeah, foods yeah. Um, digest foods um, it's, it's not as much really chewing as, as you might think really but chewing still, chewing a volume, <laughs> still a lot of volume still a lot of volume but yeah that goes down easy yeah that goes down easy every day Cool. What's your go-to, What's your go-to like, like workout, workout like, like easy, easy digestible digestible snack? snack? Are you doing like doing fuzzy, like peaches? fuzzy peaches? peaches? We talking like, like mangoes? mangoes? What are we talking about here? Um, last year um, I was big on the candy train, train, but um, but, I don't know uh, something about it mentally now. I just feel like uh like i shouldn't uh, even though yeah, this stuff i'm having is like, like i have a lot of gatorade powder which i have a lot of gatorade same powder. sugar that you'd find in candy mm-hmm. but something about that it shows, seems yeah. a little bit more like clean for an athlete even though it's probably not um i have a uh, um, some like welches and and mott's fruit snacks um and then they're just a um, couple like costco like couple like costco, little like, chewy bar little type snacks that i like um i like um, and then some some chocolate milk some here and there. Chocolate milk here and there. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Fifty one hundred calories. That is a lot. Yeah. What are you eating, yeah. eating these days, AG, ADJ? I don't think I'm that. You still high. counting? I think, I think no? I'm more around like thirty five hundred to four thousand. <laughs> okay. But uh, okay. yeah, that's that's a whole new. But I, I'm the same. Like, it's uh, it's amazing how many calories you can get from your in-workout nutrition, which I'm, you know, imagining with all the training you guys do. There's tons of in-workout nutrition and then, you know, fueling before and after, big meal before, big meal after. It just kind of like, it happens. You don't feel like you're you're eating that much. And Jack, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but you are leaner than you've ever been in the past. Am I right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This guy just keeps getting more ripped every time I see him and he's talking about eating 5,000 calories a day. So it's like that huge in the CrossFit world. I feel like nutrition has totally transformed and Chad and I noticed on your story the other day, you were talking about uh, some hydration formula that you, that Mm -hmm. you started using and just like the idea of adding electrolytes and sodium and, with all the, you know, yeah. aerobic work you're doing and just training yeah. you're doing, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely goes beyond. Yeah, it definitely goes calories. beyond. Yeah, like just calories. You're getting the salt. Yeah, like, um, I was like having some cramping um, issues, like, so cramping issues, like things so, like potassium and stuff as well. And just, stuff um, well. just um, lots, lots more than just lots, calories. Lots more than just calories. Yeah, the micronutrients have become a, a big part of my nutrition as well. Like I, I wasn't even like you talked about the chocolate milk and the Welch's and like, there's a lot of calcium and potassium and stuff in that where like, as adults, we get told like, Oh, you, you can't, you know, eat all of that food and drink all of that because it's sugary and whatever. Like when you're training as a performance athlete, you, your body is deprived of these important nutrients that you actually need. And you start getting cramping or like stress fractures or all that kind of stuff because of the depletion of nutrients, which is, I'm glad to see mm-hmm. it kind of transforming into the sport of CrossFit, which is awesome. Yeah, for Who sure. are you what working is your, with? Sorry, go ahead. Like, who are you uh, working food, with, Jack? M2 I know you're working with. Uh, for food, M2 performance. Yeah, cool. Yeah, they, they're pretty good. They got some good stuff on Insta. They clearly know what they're doing. I was going to say, what is your, 
What is your go-to your meal? Go-to meal? Uh, Are you pretty much like a chicken, yeah, rice, chicken broccoli rice, broccoli kind of guy? guy? Yes. Yeah, no. Um, I, no um, I I have rice with ground beef and then maybe barbecue sauce on it, but then maybe barbecue like sauce three times a day I eat that like and I absolutely three times love it. A day so. I eat that and I absolutely love it. So nice. It's like a little Mexican bowl. And do you ever like? Do you ever like? Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty solid. solid. I'll take a little Mexican bowl. <laughs> I like it. Well, it's good that you still love it. it. Yeah. 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 Um, Um, We had Coach Josh Josh on the pod, pod I think, like a month ago. ago. And uh, he was was speaking about how much you've been putting into the sport and really sort of expanding your skills. He was really excited for, like, your future. And we briefly talked about, like, CrossFit athletes coaching themselves, programming themselves, or following, like, an online program for saying I'm a coach. Like, what made you consider a coach yeah i followed um yeah i followed like some uh, of the bigger like uh, the general bigger, online programs for a while probably like two three while. years like um and then when i moved here to waterloo um, um here to waterloo, i know kind of just seeing um, what emma was doing and like i know kind of just seeing can... what emma was doing and like Target your specific weaknesses more than more than just picking and choosing maybe certain pieces from the general program that I was following. So general program uh, that was following. so uh, like uh, that nice was to see that that's uh, an option, and then nice also just kind of having someone also just uh, in your corner when things uh, like corner, maybe you're a bit off, like, like something's hurting, you maybe don't like want to do that specific movement. When you can just shoot a text to someone and get that get that change, that's pretty big too. So those are kind of the initial. Kind of the initial um, things that made um, me want to maybe have a coach, but it obviously goes well coach, beyond that in terms of the benefits. Of like, um, Josh like, has become like a um, really, really Josh good friend. Become, so, like, really, really um, good even just like him to have him there, like, just like when at a competition, like, when things are going well, when things aren't going well, going well, just keep you grounded, um, even more to have a guy like him there. So, yeah, it's super cool. Um, what I, what I find, I, what is, I find really, is really really interesting, really interesting is that obviously, obviously you and Emma, you and, Emma and, and Jack, Jack or sorry you Emma and Josh, Josh are all sort of all sort of kind of growing, growing together, together in the sport. In the like, sport. Obviously, like obviously we talked to Josh about Josh this. Like, this like you know he's you know, sort of new into his, his coaching coach, career. Let's call it. You guys are both new into sort of your elite athlete. You're like. Do you find like how 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 does that work for you? Like do you find that. It's better for you to be able to grow and grow with this person. You're kind of going through similar challenges. Uh, yeah. And I don't, uh, more than uh, that, yeah, I just don't think don't, it's any like disadvantage. Like he's super smart. Like he knows how to program for us. Like, um, I don't know. I don't really think there's anything that like we're missing. Um, but then, yeah, just kind of like, we're almost like then, yeah, three amigos now everywhere we go. Like, three amigos now. Um, we all just kind of have a similar headspace and we can kind of feed off each other. Or like when someone's down, the other two can kind of pick them up a little bit. So we definitely have like a good, good relationship going. And, um, if anything, that's something, and, um, think something I don't think you could find when it's kind of more of like this um, big coach and I just want to be your athlete type thing. So, so um, yeah, if anything, I I just think it's positive yeah, if anything, to, have, I, I to have Josh there. To have, to have Josh there. Yeah, you talk about Josh being super smart. Like, I, I've never seen – I've got to, you know, follow his program for a couple seasons over the past few years and – I've never seen a guy be on the leading edge so much. He's almost like, you know, ahead of the game in terms of you guys have been building your engine and your strength and your accessory work. And it's like, without talking too much about it, it's like now everyone else is coincidentally doing the same thing. So he's, he's so so passionate about like doing the, knowing the science and doing the research uh, ahead of the game, which is super cool. Um, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I, you guys know him and work with him on a daily basis, but that that's what I felt working with him. Yeah. 
when we went to yeah. Nashville, actually, it was when almost, we like, shocking Nashville, how similar was, like, the kind of stuff they're doing there is to the what, kind of like, I would have been doing had we not been there. And, uh, yeah, like, Shane was pretty awesome. And, uh, like, yeah, like, Shane was pretty awesome. Definitely a really smart guy, but, like, definitely a really you, smart Josh guy. Josh could have given like, me exactly what Josh could have given uh, exactly they were doing, and I, like, uh, thought, they were doing, and I, like, oh, this is different or weird. So, yeah, he definitely, definitely has figured out. Definitely has figured out. That's amazing. Y'all, I loved before the before the games, you guys did, and I think you guys talked about this on his podcast, but you did that track workout that was like, uh, I think it was 400s, and you got the break, and then the 400s were descending in time. And then coincidentally, you know, there was the the workout with the, the, the jerks and the intervals, and it was like, you know, he, he seems to have this knack for kind of like, understanding what's going to be tested which is really cool mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think he spends a lot yeah. of time kind of looking yeah, into a lot of time kind different of people into, and, and watching different things, people so. and, yeah. and watching things so yeah do you think there's something, there's something with, with that jack do you jack, think that there's a reason to hold, hold your programming program close to your chest, chest kind of thing i remember obviously, obviously fraser has always, always said you know he doesn't want people to share his programming versus other, other people, other people share, their share their programming. Like, do you think there's anything to it or you feel like across the board, everyone's kind of probably training the same thing or there's a few outliers? Um, yeah, I think, um, I think everyone kind yeah, I think, of has figured out to a degree. Um, I think um, if you don't think you're getting some sort of advantage from your coach, sort of then then that's probably coach, not a good thing. Uh, that's probably not so yeah, like thing. obviously we're doing uh, the same type of stuff, but I still think like he has a still think like at no disadvantage, has, only an advantage to, to other people. Like, to other people. Um, generally the same, I guess. Um, but I think generally the same, I guess. Here and there, that that maybe people are doing differently, and yeah, maybe people are doing differently, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, love, I the love the kind of secret, secret programming. programming. Like, I kind of like that idea, like, idea, like different, athletes, different athletes, you're not sharing their programming. Sharing their programming. Obviously, there's Obviously, pieces there's that, pieces you, that probably you probably expect when they're sharing, sharing on, on online and they're, online. they have a program. Have a program. But, but I like the idea like of the athletes kind of going, going in their own sort of lab, you know, with their coaches. They're kind of trying to create their own secret sauce, right? Because every athlete's different, so, like, everyone's going to have different things to do. So I kind of like the idea that there's... In my head, I my like head, the idea there's different approaches to kind of winning the CrossFit Games or doing well. Yeah, yeah, and there might be. Yeah, um, yeah, and there might. Be. What I'm doing now compared to last year is is pretty different. So, um, yeah, I think I think there's definitely yeah, for different athletes in particular different athletes that will kind of uh, achieve that will kind the of best uh, outcome, so. achieve the best outcome. So. And yeah, we've seen yeah, the we've like seen the, the popularity, popularity of like training, of like camps, training camps versus. versus uh, training, uh, training partners, partners more specifically, more specifically like, like a male and female, female duo. duo. Um, and uh, obviously, obviously that's, that's what's been shown to work the best. It seems like up to this point, I'm not sure if it's sure fully proven out, but, proven out, but just taking TM and Matt as an example. example. Uh, and we've uh, chatted with Emma in the past, your training partner. partner. And obviously, and obviously Emma really, really kind of cemented, cemented, cemented herself, herself this year. She had a great year, obviously getting to the games and wearing the leaders jersey and all that sort of stuff. Like what's it like to have sort of, up here, here within a similar, within a similar age, age bracket, bracket kind, of, kind of you know you guys are kind of going kind of back going and forth you're forth, growing the sport going together, going together you're going you're through, through similar, similar things similar together thing like, like what's that like that do you, like, you feel like that's like, that's like a, a, huge a huge thing for you or do you feel like you could really be going solo and just kind of working in a training camp or something like that yeah i mean we don't do that yeah i mean training together anymore um but just to kind of um, see just like how much she's putting into it and then that, like, a new tax new bracket? Tax is that why yeah maybe just about yeah um <laughs> yeah um, just to see what she puts into it and then like the outcome and like i see myself and, like, doing like the same things and like the same and to know that like just to kind of for me like, just to be like oh yeah this is what it takes and i'm doing it so uh like hopefully it's only a matter of time um versus if, if i was kind of just um, going solo was, like kind of just uh you kind of would have a bit more uh, doubt as kind of to have if this is enough is this the right kind of stuff um so kind of just seeing firsthand um, so someone excel just um just makes it excel, seem like um, significantly closer than like if you're just viewing it from from outside you're just viewing it from from outside 
and 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 she's your, she's your girlfriend so the occasions that you do that you work do out together work like are you guys kind of competing, competing you know you know who who gets, who what? gets what like you be, um, I'm, I'm assuming you guys are kind of throwing down um, some there's definitely some there. um there's definitely some no, we definitely uh, don't want to lose to each other that's no, for we sure definitely don't wanna lose um together, there's a lot of like someone will totally beat up on the other person on a workout just because we have kind of different strengths and weaknesses and then um and then you know the other person feels like they suck now the other person and then the other person has to console and say oh no no but uh so yeah we don't do over that much together um but when we do it's usually kind of like you know what's gonna happen before it starts so I feel like what both of you guys have in common is you you do you check all the boxes. You get the sleep, you do the nutrition, you do the the stretching and the mobility and the recovery and you take care of your bodies. Like the training is kind of like the baseline expectation, but then all of those other things allow you to show up like week over week for two years straight now and like not have any necessarily setbacks or like, you know, would you agree that you guys are very much alike in that sense? Yeah. Yeah. Similar, like, yeah. yeah even just like, like balancing school and whatnot. And then also getting all those things in for sure. Um, for sure. Yeah. Just in terms, um, it was kind of interesting yeah, watching her at the games, just knowing, watching her at um, like if I was working out with her, what I would um, consider like, like her strengths and weaknesses. So when that, first workout came up with um biking and then gymnastics um, like i knew those were two things that she would totally crush me at like she she can see two bike like almost the same paces as me and like weighs 100 pounds less so like i knew that was a good workout for her and then it was just like oh is that going to be like a win or is that does that mean she comes top 20 like i didn't really know what to expect like um so it was cool to see like a workout that i knew she would crush me at and like it turns out she's actually just like elite elite at those things so elite elite at those things (laughs) but your ftp is climbing buddy it is, yeah. Um, I got it a bit is, sick yeah. this week, so um, I got all the faces feel a bit harder so than they did the last week. But uh, yeah, yeah, definitely maybe put on an extra uh, ten or yeah, fifteen watts to that. Nice. Yeah, she crushed that workout. Yeah, yeah, she had a great year. Um, um, do Do you think that you could that you could train, train with another, another like? Another could you train with a competitor? Or do you think that's kind of um, one of the things that really helps um, you and Emma? No, I don't think it would be good. Um, whether no, I don't think it would be done or good. not. Um, I think you'd just have to have a certain type of relationship with them, like not overly competitive. Um, competitive. Yeah, but I just don't think it would as, be as yeah, good as uh, kind of good. that mixed training pair. Just when you when you win yeah. or when you lose, just when like, you, when you, you just win always or have when to bear in mind like, that like that's not really your competition. That, like, so maybe like a dude should be winning that type of workout. Maybe a girl should be winning that type of workout. Maybe girl should be winning that type Just to kind of keep yourself level either way, whether you're winning or losing. So if you're always going head to head with someone that you're always the day you're trying to beat, I think it just might get a little too much. I think it just might get a little too much. Would you would you say you're like a like a student of the sport? Like, do you love diving into the numbers with Coach Josh? Like, love to look into the different mechanics of everything, or you're very much just like I'm just going to show up and do the work. Like, I'm I just want to be a workhorse. I just want to go out there and just leave all my sort of doubters. You know, like let me just go on the floor and show what I can do. I I think the the form. I, I think um, the. the like I love watching different people like, do how they do certain things. Like rope climb technique, I've probably watched rope like climb technique, I've hours of like, like how Rich is doing it, how like, this person's doing it, and then like this person going to the gym the next day. Like I saw like Pat Vellner, like I saw like was different than mine, and he dominates these rope climb workouts. So I go to the gym the next day and try. Um, or like I see how this person or like eating, and now I think like eating. Oh yeah, I should probably try to like incorporate some of that. Um, and I think I think it helps. Um, I think I think it like, helps. Yeah, um, being a student of the game, like, 
but then at a certain game. point you kind of just but have to shut the brain off and do it and uh at times i think i've struggled a little bit with that but i'm kind of trying to just that but relax a little bit on that side of things and just turn the mind off like we said um just turn the mind off like sometimes for example last year like i'm trying to trying to avoid like seed oils or something and and then i eat this little thing with whatever in it and i go oh yeah now i'm whatever and i go oh yeah now i'm sure there's no way this work it's gonna go well um well. and um i've i've just kind of become a bit more lax kind of on that side of things and that allows me to just i just like to think of myself as like a machine like just think of myself as like a machine get the fuel in and then like you're ready to go so like take the take the thinking out of it just turn your brain off thinking out of it just turn your brain off but i i will say I will say uh, don't take don't change too much because like I feel like much because like the sport like similar to other sports, sports right they lose sports, like right, they every, like, every professional, professional athlete professional gets to a point and they're like they're almost got they're too almost much got of an ego. It's like, yeah, I don't yeah, care. I'll yeah, just yeah, go out there and I'll just do this. But like deep down, it's like, you gotta be like looking, you gotta be, you gotta be caring to some degree. It's like, it always drives me nuts when like some of the best athletes like, yeah, I just go and do it. I just want to go out there and do, do my thing. It's just another day. It's like, give us more. I want to more. I want to like, I want to hear like people actually caring. Yeah. Yeah. So I, like sure. that. I, I mean, that. I think you can be yeah, a machine. Sure. I mean, I think like, you can turn the brain off and, and still be like ultra competitive. Um, it's just kind of not, mm-hmm. that's what I'm trying to do at least. Um, just that's what I'm trying to do at least. Staying out of my head while doing that. Staying out of my head while doing that. Gotcha. So you're, so you're, you're, you're a student of the game. game. You're so, so uh, and you're also, you're also a university, university of Waterloo. Waterloo. You're an engineering student. Still. You're trying to be a CrossFit Games level athlete. athlete. You were kind of mentioning, like talking about balance. Like, how, how do you manage those two significant priorities? Like, how how are you doing? How are you balancing this? Um, um, I, I what I say to people is I just put I, I, as little I into school as I can while still being comfortable <laughs> with it. Like, I don't want with it. Like, I don't really care don't what want, my marks are, but I also I don't, don't really want to be like borderline are, failing because now stress starts to add up and i have to get this mark on this last assignment or else i'm not going to pass um so like putting enough um, into school so like that it's, it's comfortable school, and now it's out of the way once i've once i've done that and the rest the way, whatever, whatever that is that, goes into crossfit um, whatever that is goes i think, into I think i'm lucky um, enough to be i think i'm somewhat smart that i can get decent marks while putting in less work than a lot of other people um so i've kind of been rolling with that so far i've been rolling with that it's really not um, that that it's crazy. really not um that, for me at least but crazy. yeah um, for me at least but yeah this is <laughs> this is this is a guy who's at the, the top engineering school maybe like in north america and he's Best in one of the ever. toughest programs <laughs> around and he's talking about i just do enough to get by i think jack like you just have a, a work ethic that like you just you're okay with waking up and just going to work every day and doing what you got to do. That's cool. At 20 years old, man. <laughs> workhorse, man. He's a workhorse. Yeah. Great answer. That's just like the most, that's how most kids, ever. that's how most <laughs> kids function and they have no other priorities. They just do enough yeah. to get well, by. I was, I was, I was, yeah. Yeah. My follow up question, question was going to be, gonna be, you know, you know, University, University of Waterloo, Waterloo, student, Waterloo student, student, you know, just trying to build a side, build hustle, side hustle or something hustle like that, and they're like just like waking up, just like, like I can't do this, right? And I was uh, looking for some sort of inspirational moment from Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Yeah. No, I just gotta, you, just know. Gotta, you know. So, I, I'm, so assuming I, I'm assuming you're you're, you're, all, you're, in you're all in CrossFit. CrossFit. Like, CrossFit, CrossFit is, like CrossFit is like that's, like that's your, your 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 future in your eyes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like obviously, I'm on my second year of a five year program, so still. So, some time to be had there um be had there. but like um, yeah at the end of the day but, like if i could finish yeah, that up day, like and then you have that in the back up, pocket for the rest you of your life and and if i can go in all in and cross it if i can go in for a little bit that'd be fun so for a little um, bit if that kind of if, um, if at that point in time it's a real opportunity at that point in time it's a real opportunity did you always dream of becoming a pro athlete yeah when i was a kid uh yeah when i was like a kid hockey like uh, nhl yeah um yeah i don't know uh, soon enough you kind of start to realize know, like soon enough if i was really going to the nhl like 
if I was really good I'd, in the NHL, I wouldn't like, be playing double A here. Like, I'd be one of the like top AAA here, kids. Like, and, and top um, kids. So, yeah, then, then um, it kind of just becomes so yeah, then, playing hockey for fun. Um, but definitely when I was like a, a younger um, kid, but definitely when I was, it was like NHL kid, or bust. It was like NHL or bust. Cool. Now it's CrossFit. Now it's CrossFit. Yeah. 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 So like, like, so I, I have to ask you a few questions. I mean, there's been a lot of, uh, CrossFit news CrossFit happening, happening about, you know, the professionalizing the sport, sport, a few a competitions, few you know, not able to pay their athletes. athletes. Et cetera, et cetera. Like, like you're, you're one of the young athletes young in the sport. sport. It, do you think, do you about, think how about how to, how to, like, how does the sport actually, actually become, become like a pro sport? sport. Obviously, obviously, it is, it is at a pretty, pretty significant, significant level, level now, but I know there's but a lot of people, people that are always saying, like, it needs to elevate to a different level. Do you think about that? Do you, like, put any effort into kind of thinking about what the sport's going to be in the future as you kind of grow with it? Um, maybe a little um, bit, but maybe a little bit. Not too but concerned about it. That's, that's kind of the whole reason, kind of the like, whole I'm doing school now. Is like, school now is like whatever happens, I'm, whatever happens, I'm kind of ready. Kind so of CrossFit ready, totally so blows off, and now that's totally blows thing, off, well, and now that's not I'm not thing, totally well, cooked. So I'm not um, totally cooked. So um, yeah, I mean, right now, um, yeah, any I mean, money right is kind of just like um, great. Now I don't have to like stress about school. Um. And and definitely like as I get better and better, there's more and more opportunity to kind of make some money there. Um, so yeah, right now kind of just so yeah, right now it's just a total bonus. It's just a total bonus. Cool. Yeah, I think that's a cool mindset. To, yeah, a cool mindset to have. Like you're you're in it to be the best athlete you can be, and you're in a good spot being a student. That it's not like the be all end all. And, you know, quite frankly, if, if you're at the top of your sport in whatever sport it is, you can be successful. For sure. But to be the best to in be any best sport, in right? Sport, it, right? It, it demands a lot, right? A lot. It demands more than a, a full time capacity. Yeah. So, yes. So like, yeah. I, I don't know like, what I, uh, I, I would do differently what, if I wasn't uh, in school, to be honest. Like, school, to be honest. Like, um, maybe um, like here and there, maybe, like, here uh, and I have there, like some assignments, uh, so, I so I lose an hour of sleep, or I maybe have to cut the last cut set of accessories a bit short. Like, minor things like that maybe happen a handful of times a year. So, sure, maybe I'll get rid of those, but maybe I'll get rid of those. Yeah, like, um, it, I don't feel yeah, like, like it's it, really that hindering it, uh, like as it is right now. So it only makes, uh, almost makes me think if I didn't have school, like what would I do all day? Um, like what would I do all day? I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, Netflix or something. Yeah, Netflix. Well, you also coach CrossFit too, right? Uh, right now, just two hours a week. So uh, right now, just two hours. Not too much time there. Um, not too much time there. Okay. Okay. And. I was going to say, so, say, so what's, your, what's your, what's the future look for, look like for you? So you have Rogue have coming Rogue up in a few weeks. After Rogue, after Rogue are, you are, you are you looking to do any other, any other off-season, off-season comps? comps? Off-season comps. Um, um, the original plan was to do a lot of players, but then when Rogue uh, happened, uh, I kind of ditched that idea. I think to have one really big off-season comp is is good enough. Um, maybe I'll do a small um, one here or there, but really after there, Rogue, really after like the Rogue, Open's kind of in like sight, so you can start to kind of prepare for the season. Kind of for and, and once January, February and rolls around, like, like you're already in the thick of things. You're already in the CrossFit season, so um, yeah, I don't know. Not too much of a plan now. Yeah, I don't know. Not to get Rogue in, see what we need to keep working on, and and then doing that for the next four or five months after. For the next four or five months after. Nice. And, I, nice, and nice. I'm assuming, I'm assuming like, like you're a goal setter, setter and I'm assuming setter. the goal next year is to make it to the games. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, the number yeah, one right yeah. now. That's uh, the number one right now. Did you put like you a put, time like, limit on that for yourself? For like yourself, I need like, to make it to the games by age 22, 21. 21. Or did you say? Um, no, make I remember games? at the beginning. Um, no, of, uh, I remember when they announced at the, the whole semifinal, of, uh, when they quarterfinal the kind of plan. Um, I was talking plan, with my brother-in-law um, then, and I was talking. And we kind of like we were just thinking like what's possible, like, and um, like, I remember possible, we said, oh well, you won't um, make semis this year. Oh well, like that's a bit a bit steep. Top one twenty. 
next year you'll make it and probably be like bottom level Bottom the level. next year you'll be final the heat, and then the next year you'll be maybe contending for top five. Um, so um, I I so end up being semi that, that year, and like so now I'm like, kind of two years yeah, ahead of that plan already. Plan but plan already. Uh, cool. I don't, no pressure uh, I don't, in terms of no any time. I just want to go as soon as possible. Great, dude. That's excellent. Love it, man. Love it. I was gonna ask you, do you have any? Um, I I asked, I asked Josh, Josh this, uh, as well. Like, well, like, this is also this just is also a fan just of the fan CrossFit of the games, games and, and trying to create more of a storyline. But like, but like, I gotta, I gotta like, give me like a story, like a story, that, story that happens that behind, happens the, behind scenes the scenes after, after between, between events, events in the crowds. Like, like, what are you guys doing? Like, I, I, I want CrossFit to start taking a camera back there and giving us some behind the scenes, like. Is it just a bunch just of bodies bunch laying, of body over laying over the floor, the floor or like, what are you guys like, doing back there? I feel like at Kill uh, West, these guys the had a good time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it depends on the competition. Yeah. Um, um, this is like, like we all, like we all a little bit. So like, whatever, let's just throw it in here, have a good time. Um, and like, yeah, that whole time, like I was hanging like, out with yeah, like time, guys like, competing with, like, in the same division as me, like we're just camping under the same tent and like camping under the making jokes, whatnot. Um, and then warm up would start to roll around and like warm up would start to roll around at the beginning of the weekend. We kind of like, I did our own thing, but then as the weekend progressed, everyone just loosened up a little bit. Like even the warm up area was just a little bit like, I mean, you're warming up, but you're still like chatting about whatever, just having a good time. Um, Atlas was the complete opposite. Um, like Atlas was the complete opposite. nobody talked to anyone. Um, nobody talked to anyone. It was it was almost like okay. awkward at it was, times. It was like almost like um, awkward at times. Like I mean, I'm I still kind of was like I'm not I mean, fanboying, but like in awe that I'm like on the, in the same heat as some of these big guys, and like you're walking by them. Um, you're walking in like the hallway, them, and like. Um, in, like, there's the only hallway. two people there. Like you can just give like a little nod or something, but like no, like it wasn't even like eye contact. And I learned that early in the weekend. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it has to be that way, to be honest. Like, you don't have to be all buddy buddy, but just give a little nod or smile. Uh, it's fine. But it maybe maybe when I turn into one of the big dogs, I'll do the same thing, or I'll change it up. We'll see. I'll change it up. We'll see. Yeah, man. I think, I think it's a sign, Jack. Like, I think they're just a little bit nervous about where you're where you're yeah. coming. You know, I think so. The future. Yeah, they maybe, know. Maybe. They sense it. Velner, Velner was intimidated by you. Yeah. <laughs> I would be too. Yeah, like, I, yeah, like you, I, know, I, you know, CrossFit's all about, all about community, community right? right? And, and I, I, always I always hope that, hope like, that, like, and it, it's always it's difficult because, like, like, with any sport, there's sport, always, like, top tier competitors that are just, like, like ruthless, ruthless, right? right. They, they smile they for the cameras, but then when it's game time, they just flip a switch and it's just game on. With CrossFit, there's such a sense of community. I've always hoped always that the elites that have that sort of sense. And you kind of see kind some, of athletes some athletes being a bit more relaxed relax and other athletes, athletes, athletes are not. not. So, like, so like, yeah, I, yeah, mean, I mean, you're a good Canadian you're boy. Good I hope the Canadian boys, boys are kind of, you know, you know, out there having fun and mm-hmm. joking around. I think Belner does that, think, too. Uh, so I'm glad. I also think Sammy's is, like, the number one most cutthroat time of the year. Like, it can go so wrong. It can go so wrong. Like, yeah, so, like, when you're at the games, I like, well, we made it. But, um, yeah, semis is a bit different. That's true, too. That's true. So, I mean, I, I imagine, like, Rogue, I, like I mean, that's a pretty cool, so cool event they set up there. Like, obviously, there's a lot of money on the line, but it's also invites, mostly. So, it's like everyone's kind of pretty happy to be there. So, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, I imagine you'll have a good time. I'm super excited yeah. to watch, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be fun. A lot cool. of haters, Jack. People are, people are, you know, saying, I don't know this Jack Farlow guy. I don't know if he should be at Rogue. I, I think uh, they're in for a little bit of a rude awakening. He's ready, man. He's ready. I think so I think I'll. He's ready. So. At the very I'll, least, have. Um, at the very least, have, have some um, moments to shine, and some everything I've been working on will. Kind of I've been working on will help me to avoid kind of those help, those bottom finishes. So those crazy good field. So, so like no crazy good field. No expectations like no, or pressure, but like no expectations. Yeah, I, I pressure, think it can only like, go well. Yeah, I, I think it can only go well. Yeah, let's go play your game, buddy. Love it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I was gonna have yeah, ask one more question. You got like a pregame, pre-game sort of ritual. You got. Do you obviously you're a hockey player, so I know that's 
pretty common. Pretty common. Do you have any, you sort, have of any sort of pre-game, pre-game stuff for, stuff for, for CrossFit, CrossFit before an event? Before an event? Um, usually, um, uh, it kind of resets uh, every competition. Every competition. Like, uh, every I'll kind of ditch the old like, uh, um, things uh, that I always do, and then I'll do, like, one do event, and if it goes well, it's like, oh, I'll just keep, well, keep those habits up, so... <laughs> Um, whether it's like wearing um, a specific sweater, like in sweater, sweater in the warm up area for sure. Um, for sure. <laughs> a couple um, years ago I a couple years ago I had I, my lucky sweater and I had my lucky even though it was like super hot outside, like I just brought it with me to the gym. I like had to be there. So <laughs> I, I have my things. Um I have my things. I mean this one's <laughs> kinda more science based, but like kinda more exactly an hour before my workout starts, that's when I like start the the caffeine train and stuff. So uh a couple things like that. Uh, a couple of things like that. Cool, man. Love it. True hockey player. True hockey, True hockey player, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah my dad true. was. Yeah, my dad, my dad was, was like the number one. My dad was superstitious guy of all time. So, um, back in the day when I was playing, like back in the day, like, when I was probably playing, like ten playing hockey, like, like house league, like, hockey, like first couple like, years of hockey. League, like, um, he wasn't a coach or trainer, but he had this um, thing where he had to fill up the water bottles uh, for the team. And one time <laughs> someone else and did it, and they were all ready to go, like it. outside the locker room. Like, and he brought them the back in and dumped them all out so he could fill them himself. Yeah. Get it all to sleep. Oh, thanks, Dad. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. Great. Good stuff. Well, thanks, man. I, I mean, appreciate, yeah, I appreciate sitting down, down for the, down hour, the hour, sharing your story. Sharing appreciate, your story. appreciate, you know, all the insight. All the insight. And, um, and uh, yeah, man, it's super, it's been super amazing, amazing watching, you watching you kind of climb the CrossFit ladder. ladder and, and I think, uh, it's exciting, it's exciting, now, exciting cause now cause it's like, it's like there's such a huge ceiling for you. So I'm super excited that you <laughs> made your way to Rogue your way and I'm super excited to watch. So go kick ass and represent and we'll be cheering. Sounds good. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Sounds good. Yeah. I'm excited for that. All right, man. Maybe we'll get you back on. Uh, how about you? You and Emma just go across Rogue, and then we'll get you back on the dynamic duo good. after Rogue. Yeah, feels good. Maybe throw Josh. The champs. Maybe throw Josh in there. Yeah, yeah. He's always up for <laughs> the <one>. trio. <laughs> I like it. I like it. The three Stooges. I got it. Sweet. Well, uh, thanks everyone for listening. Coach AJ, thanks for sitting down, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks. We'll chat soon. And uh, good luck to the both of you on your big weekends coming up. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll see you later. See you later.